Temple Mud. When I first found out that there was a new expansion to Eastward coming and I heard the title, I couldn't wait to see what it was going to be. This game was easily one of my favorite games of 2021, and so my mind was racing towards all the different possibilities as to what we could expect to see in this DLC. Were we going to see a prequel of sorts that would give us a little more insight into the backstories of our main characters or the world setting? Or is this DLC going to be for those who completed the game, like a continuation of the original game story or something? Well, the truth is, it's not really any of those things. You can instead think of Eastward Octopia as a sort of alternate universe game, featuring many of the characters you know and love from the original, but perhaps a different version of them, in a different timeline, following a different story. They definitely don't seem to be the exact same people we adventured with in the original Eastward, as there aren't really any events from the main game here in Octopia. If you have already played Eastward, which I'm assuming many of you have if you're watching this video, you know that its developer Pixpill likes to be vague on certain story elements, meaning you'll usually have to try to fill in the gaps yourself. If you've never played Eastward though, don't worry, I'll do my best to keep this spoiler free. I'll also only be showing footage from the early parts of the DLC to keep that spoiler free as well. While the original Eastward was an interesting callback to Zelda-like gameplay and exploration with a little bit of Earthbound, Dragon Quest, and I'd argue even a little Mario and Luigi thrown in there for good measure, Eastward's Octopia DLC could basically be seen as Stardew Valley gameplay set inside the world of Eastward. In true Eastward fashion though, I can confirm there's a bit more lurking underneath the surface of this otherwise charming and idyllic setting that we see in the trailer. And this was what I was hoping to find out once I dived into the game. Ever since Stardew Valley and later Animal Crossing made waves on the internet and pretty much invented the term cozy game in 2020, we've seen so many of these farming sims and cutesy games come out to varying degrees of quality and success. And because of this, I was worried that the Octopia DLC would only be a shallow Stardew clone, relying on its eye-catching art style to allow it to jump on a trend. And while I do admittedly love Eastward's setting and aesthetic, just that alone wouldn't have been enough for me. With that said, while the meat and potatoes of this DLC is very Stardew Valley, I'd say that the gameplay has enough differences to stand on its own and warrant a purchase. I will say though that I think I'm the ideal customer for something like this, as I have played both Stardew and Eastward extensively and loved them both, but even I was concerned that if Octopia was exactly like Stardew, what's the point in playing it? I would just get burnt out. Yes, you do wake up each day and develop your farm at your own pace. Just like Stardew, you also till the land, plant crops, water them, harvest them after enough time passes, go fishing, clear out the rocks and trees and shrubbery, raise livestock, again, very Stardew Valley. However, Octopia differs quite a bit in its pacing. Crops grow much faster, trees you've cut down grow much quicker, your two main characters work together in tandem, so planting seeds is a lot quicker and easier, your watering can never runs out of water like it does in Stardew, and so on. The day and night system is at a great pace where it does seem to go by quickly, but I also rarely ever felt like I ran out of time before I could accomplish everything I set out to do in the day, since all the activities in Octopia take less time. In this respect, I think that Eastward Octopia actually has a leg up on Stardew Valley, and its quicker pacing will hopefully allow you to feel rewarded each in-game day that you play. There isn't a friendship or romance system like the one in Stardew, but there are a lot of cutscenes and character moments throughout the game that inject a lot of charm into the gaming experience. When you first get there, the little town you stay in is so small and there's less to do, so this does mean that at least in the beginning hours of the game, it can feel a little slow. As you get more options for your farm, however, more people visit the village and more of the surrounding area opens up to you. And the game really does open up to you. There will be surprises when you hit certain new areas, trust me. This is a pretty lengthy DLC too, at about 15 to 20 hours, which I think is a great deal considering that the DLC is only $6. I've seen a couple people say this and I'd agree, it is basically a completely new Eastward game. I'd say that once you break through the first two to three hours, the game's speed picks up quite a bit and it stays pretty even as you go. The original Eastward was absolutely filled to the brim with dialogue, long cutscenes, exposition, and sometimes there were scenes that would just play out just for the humor or whatever and didn't really move the plot forward. In fact, there were whole chapters of that game where a healthy amount of people felt like it was just filler. So I was expecting somewhat of a slow paced game coming into this, but I think Pixpill learned a lot from that feedback they received on the original Eastward with Octopia, and I have to say that the DLC flows pretty nicely. As an example, I had a chicken coop and a beehive set up by my first in-game week. In Stardew Valley, I'm sure there are many who didn't even have that set up within their first in-game six months or even a year. And as you progress, the upgrades you can unlock accelerate the game's pacing at just the right time. I'm focusing on elements like these so much because I know Eastward Octopia is inevitably going to draw comparisons to Stardew Valley. 
but I'm here to say that thankfully, it's not a half-hearted cash grab and it does enough to differentiate itself. Octopia absolutely stands on its own. Now, do I like it as much as the original Eastward? I would probably say no as that game is more adventure based and this is more of a farming sim, but there's a lot to love here for fans of the original Eastward. An element of the game that is pretty much indisputably perfection is the game's gorgeous pixel art style. Eastward borrows a bit of art direction from the Earthbound series and uses it to great effect. It also has a little bit of that HD 2D aesthetic going on that I love where it's a mostly pixel art based game but it has somewhat advanced lighting and shadows that greatly benefit the aesthetic. Play the game for just one in-game day and you'll see that there's a great attention to detail. As you run through the various areas in Octopia, birds will fly out of your way, frogs will jump into the water, squirrels will scurry away, and by the way, those squirrels and birds sometimes drop seeds that you can plant if you're lucky. The lighting in this game is amazing. Rays of sunlight and moonlight will cascade down over the fields. The transition from day to nighttime is always a treat. Lightning bugs will come out, the lights around the village will turn on. It's really something to behold. The backgrounds give off a Bob Ross painting vibe and there's some sort of film or filter over the entire game that, especially when mixed with the way the weather changes and the slice of life gameplay, helps give this game a sort of dreamlike Studio Ghibli kind of vibe. The music is once again composed by Joel Korolitz, who I absolutely adore. I feel like I almost always use at least one track of his from the original Eastward soundtrack in almost all of my videos because it has easily become one of my favorite game soundtracks. If you don't know who Joel Korolitz is, by the way, he has composed songs for some really small titles like Halo Infinite and What Remains of Edith Finch. Another thing that I think you'll really enjoy about this game, whether you're a returning fan of the series or someone completely new to Eastward, is the amount of heart that's packed into this game. John is this gruff, rough exterior type of guy who never talks in neither Eastward nor Octopia, but he's a hard worker who has a soft spot for cooking. It's through all his acts of service that he does without complaint for the villagers and especially for his main companion Sam, where you can see that this guy really must have a heart of gold and a lot of love for what he does despite how quiet he is. Sam is sort of John's adopted daughter. You can find out exactly how she and John met by playing the original Eastward, but just know that she is the absolute best. Completely different from John, Sam is playful, energetic, and has this infectious enthusiasm that I was so glad to see come back after playing the original Eastward like three years ago. Since John is your typical silent protagonist, Sam tends to talk for them both, and she's an absolute joy to follow. One thing I really like about this game that also speaks to the amount of heart it has is that you have to cook a meal each night for you and Sam. No matter what you make, whether it's a piece of toast or the most luxurious highbrow dish that you can imagine, Sam wolfs it down with glee. If Sam is meeting someone new, seeing something new, or receiving a gift, she reacts the exact same, with pure joy, the kind that only a child can have, and it's great. As you grow more crops, catch more fish, and in general progress through the game, John can learn a ton of new recipes, and you start to learn that this guy can really throw down in the kitchen when he wants to. From pancakes to sashimi to hot dogs to strawberry shortcakes to crab cakes, this guy can do it all and it makes you hungry. I found fishing to be really fun, and there's another mini game you can unlock later in the DLC which I won't spoil, but it's like playing a game from a totally different time period and it's very rewarding to play, just give it a shot. Fishing was a little confusing at first, but essentially you drop your bobber down and try to catch the attention of the fish by slowly moving towards it or away from it, depending on the fish. Then, once it starts to pull on the line, chase it down and hit it with your bobber. I've always said that you can usually judge a game by the quality of its fishing minigame, and Eastward Octopia's is enjoyable and simple. And like with the original game, Eastward Octopia is filled with references to other popular franchises. And these references usually include pop culture references, references to popular movies, anime, or other video games. And like with the original game, these aren't lame references that just seem to come out of nowhere or serve no purpose. They're actually really cool and creative. And there was one in particular that actually kind of gave me chills when I saw it. I really enjoyed my time with Eastward Octopia and I beat it in a flash because of it. As someone who is a big fan of the original game, and I'm sure I'll make my own dedicated video to the original game one day, I think one of my favorite aspects of this Octopia expansion is that it gives you a glimpse into the life that I'm sure all of us Eastward veterans think John and Sam deserve after all the things they went through. And though admittedly I was a little doubtful of this DLC's need to even exist, I'm so glad to say that I understand it now that I've played through it, and I was so thankful to be back in this world again within the first 15 minutes. If you enjoy cozy games, if you enjoy some slice of life stuff, 
stuff, a palate cleanser of sorts from whatever brutal or intense games you're playing, especially if you're a fan of Stardew Valley or Eastward, the Octopia DLC is going to make you smile over and over. For $6, this one is hard to beat and genuinely a great gift for us Eastward fans. It's a great excuse to get back into that Eastward world, to see those familiar characters that you know and love. And if you haven't played Eastward before and this DLC intrigues you, go ahead and just get the full package. It's fantastic. If you're still here, thanks so much for watching, and as always, stay humble.